Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. We're going to look at Genesis 41 and verse 1 this morning. Genesis 41, if you have your Bibles, it's the very first uh, book of the Bible. Genesis and uh, 41 verse 1. And uh, I believe the Lord will bless, bless us this morning. And uh, I'm going to uh, uh, talk to us just for a, a moment on uh, a very uh, interesting title, actually. The title is Two by Four. Two by Four. And uh, I was going to bring a two by four with me this morning, but uh, the only one I had was a little bit too long and intimidating. So I didn't, <laughs> didn't bring it. <laughs> so two by four. Tell your neighbor two by four. Tell him he's talking about two by fours. Genesis 41 and verse 1, and it says this. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. Let me just pray for us. Lord, I just pray right now that you would just touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Lord, that you would uh, open up our eyes, our ears, our heart. Lord, that we might receive, Lord. That we might hear, know, see, and understand something new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. The first word I want to give you this morning is two. Is two. It seems like a story, doesn't it? It says, and it came to pass. It almost seems as if we were going to say, once upon a time, all right? But it says, it came to pass. And I, I like that because often in our life, if we, the older we, we get, the older we get, we, we, we get to a place where, where things happen to come to pass in our life, you know? Because I have lived a certain, a certain time, things have come to pass, right? And, and uh, so the word two this morning, I want to talk about the word two. And, and the two in this particular scripture uh, indicates amount of time of waiting for Joseph, all right? Because Joseph was waiting, amen? Has anybody ever had to wait <laughs> for something in their life? I mean, I get tired of waiting for my pizza to show up at the front door. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm like, where is the pizza guy, you know? Especially when I'm really hungry. And, uh, and I, I, I know that it's, it, it, to wait for something, especially when you really need it or really feel like you have a need for it, is very difficult for us. Um, because it involves something called patience, right? Patience is something that we only can gain through experience, right? And uh, Joseph, Joseph had, had lived, lived a, a, a life. He was he had beat up and thrown into a pit. He was sold and falsely accused. He was uh, put in jail. I mean, I'm kind of uh, just glossing over the, the feelings that he must have experienced in his life, especially... Uh, you know, when it came to the time when the butler and the baker showed up in the, in the jail cell and surely God was going to deliver him within three days, right? Because that's what he interpreted their dream for them. And it was three days. And, and, and Joseph was, was probably certain at that moment that God was going to show up very shortly. But it was two full years later. Okay? Two full years later. And, and I, I love the word two full years because often we, we think about years and uh, especially you know I'm, I'm 52 and I, I think about years and years seem to go quicker now because I'm older but that's only because I'm more experienced at years okay when I was younger I wasn't as experienced at years and so my years seemed like they took forever like I remember going on on vacation in summer right between between uh, 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 you know first and second grade and and fourth and fifth grade and sixth and seventh grade you know and it's summer seemed like it was forever it took forever it was a long time and it really wasn't that long and now now my years are full right my years are full because I have all kinds of things going on in my life I'm adulting right I'm adulting now okay and so when you begin to adult you begin to fill your life full of stuff that's what we do and I wonder how much stuff we fill our life with that really shouldn't be there right because isn't it important uh, if, I had, if, I, if I could go back and talk about the big rocks and the sand and the water and, and how we fill our lives, it's important that we fill our, our life with the big things and let the little things kind of filter in around that. But 
Is God the center of my life? Is he really, really, really the center? Do I really, really put focus on my time with him? Because that, that I believe is a, the, the very first thing I should be thinking about in my life. And, and I should begin to, to reevaluate maybe some other things. Because time with God is so important. It really is. Without my time with him, I, I, I don't have any new fresh, fresh revelation. I don't have any new... Uh, uh, anything to talk to you guys about, but more importantly, that, that relationship that I have with God has to be fresh in my life every single day. Amen? Two full years, right? <laughs> Did you know the years either will make you bitter or better? Did you ever notice that? You get, you get something that happens in your life, and then you're either going to get better from it or you're going to get bitter over it. And, and often when something bad happens, it's like just a second and you're right back at that very moment and you're bitter again, right? And you, you let that bitterness rob you, rob you and rob you. And, 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 and it, it, it's interesting, it's interesting that, that Joseph, it doesn't appear, ever got bitter. He only got better, right? He was prepared for, for the, pla- the palace even though he was living in the jail. That's where, there he, where he was at. Two years later, I was thinking about the word two, just the word two. And I, I, was, I was thinking, well, it was, it's significant, probably, the word two, because maybe it's because Jesus and I, right? Jesus comes to live with me, so I'm no longer alone. Often we think we're alone, but, but Jesus is with us, so we are never alone. I also thought about the, the two animals, you know, when, when Noah opened the, oh, built his ark and, uh, and the animals came two by two and I was wondering why would God bring the animals two by two and, and I know that it was two by two because he wanted to save them, right? He wanted them to be saved. He, he knew destruction was coming so he sent them to the ark to be saved and, and it was interesting to, to know that, it's interesting to know that, that that is the heart of God to save us, Right? to save us, to bring us to a place where we are safe. I, I wonder if, if, if two years was the amount of time longer Joseph needed to be saved from himself, from his attitude, from his, his motives, from his, his circumstance, from, from, from getting uh, his, his pride under control. You know, maybe you've never suffered with pride, right? Like I have. I've suffered with pride. I've suffered and I've, I've, I've struggled with it. But I know that the heart of God today is to save us, is to bring us to a place where we're safe, right? Where we're saved, where we're safe in Him. Amen? Amen? And why? God sent, the, Jesus sent the disciples out two by two also. He sent them out two by two. Uh, why not by fours? Why not have a, all 12 go and have a tour, you know, and go all the way around and have a tour and say, here come the disciples, you know, and they had this big thing, you know, this tour, but he sent them out by twos. He sent them out by twos. If two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of that, right? Jesus is looking for two to agree today. Two years to agree with him. He says, to everybody that you are not alone today, right? Uh, you know, even the feeling of being alone is false because often we do feel alone, but that's a false feeling. And you know, your feelings will lie to you every single time. There is, there, your feeling is not truth, okay? What I feel, even right now in this moment, is not true because the Word of God is true. And what I, what I, what I experience in my life often is just feelings, all right? Feelings robbing me of what the truth is that God is trying to show me in that moment. Amen? God's plan for my life will always include, God's plan for your life will always include uh, a, a time of preparation. It always will, will include that. You're not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Amen? He's preparing us. Amen? Uh, <laughs> you know, often in life, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, we base our lives on what comes to us or what comes against us. Think about this. We, we, we base our life on what, what we've experienced already or what is, what is in, the, in front of us at this moment. So that's where we, where we live. We live 
in an imaginary circumstance. And often in our life, in our brain, okay, we imagine this is the circumstance. This is what it's going to look like. This is the way it's going to go. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but I, I see the end in the middle of the moment, okay? And the end that I see never happens. <laughs> Rarely does it ever come out like I think it's going to happen. Amen? Amen? So, so, so what happens is our mind is warped. Our mind is warped, right? Most of the things that we think will happen never do. Amen? God's plan for our life will always include what is, pre what, what is prepared for us. I, I like the word provision, okay? Because we're looking for God's provision in our life. But you know what pro means? That means for Right? And, and that means his vision is for us, right? His vision is for us. I can trust him, right, with what he is doing. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen? I can trust him with the beginning. I mean, he created heaven and earth, he created me. He knew I'd be here now. That means that he's going to finish what he started in me. Amen? I can trust him with the end. Amen? And it starts in the, in the moment, though. In this moment, I can trust him with my beginning and my end. Isn't it, isn't it crazy? All of this stuff that happened before, I can trust that God will work it all out in my life. Amen? Let me, let me give you another word. Bye. Bye. It's interesting to me that at the end of two full years, Pharaoh dreamed a dream. <laughs> Joseph didn't dream a dream. He already had dreamed a dream. Remember when he, when, he, when he told his brothers, he said, I, I dreamed a dream and there was these haystocks standing up and all of you guys came and your haystocks bent, bent down and, and gave, uh, uh, they, oh, they, they, they worshiped me. They, they bent down and, and said I was so, uh, someone higher than them. And, and, and it's interesting in, my, in, in Joseph's life that, and, and you can see the story in Genesis 1. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, went, I moved a little bit out of, out of sync, but he said, he his brothers hated him more because uh, his dad, Israel, loved him more than all of his other brothers, okay? <laughs> and the brothers knew it, and so then when he began to recite the dream that God had given him, they hated him even more. And it's interesting to know that. Uh, uh, but Pharaoh, Pharaoh was called by God to dream a dream. See, see, Joseph was called also, but God used Pharaoh to help Joseph, right? God used Pharaoh to help Joseph. Joseph didn't have to worry about helping Joseph. Joseph had to worry about worshiping God, had to worry about his position with God. Amen? <laughs> you know, jo Joseph could have said no. Pharaoh dreamed a, a dream. Joseph could have said, uh, and Pharaoh called for Joseph, and Joseph just could have went, <coughs> can't go to Pharaoh. And he could have got, got worried, you know, why is Pharaoh, why am I going to Pharaoh? What's going to happen? What's Pharaoh going to do to me? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Uh, he's going to kill me? Is he going to kill me? I don't know what he's going to do. Why is he even calling me? He could have, he could have got concerned. He could have got to a place and just said, no, I'd just rather stay in jail. It's, it's my, my place of comfort. I don't have to worry about where I'm getting my meal tomorrow. Right? I'm just going to stay right there. Right? <laughs> How did Pharaoh even know he was in jail? He didn't know. He didn't even know nothing about Joseph. Two full years had gone by. And actually it was longer than that. But he, he was in jail and Pharaoh knew nothing about him until Pharaoh dreamed a dream. Pharaoh dreamed a dream. I, I, I think it's interesting uh, to, 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 when we think about God's providence Okay? It's interesting to go to the beginning for a moment, if you would, and look at Genesis 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning God. In the beginning God. And he created the heaven and the earth. In verse 2, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And see, if I was preaching a salvation message, I would, I would bring that verse to you and I'd say, your life without God is going to be void and darkness, right? And, and there's, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be, there's going to be nothing. There's going to be no form to it. Okay? Because that's really what our life looks like without God. But when, when, the, when the Spirit of God comes into your life, it is no longer without form. It's no longer in darkness, and it's no longer void. 
And I love it. It says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said in verse 3, let there be light. I struggled with that verse, just that statement this week. I struggled with it because I wondered, does God need light really to see? Does God need light? The answer is no. He doesn't need light. Matter of fact, there's a verse that says, in the darkness, he sees it as if it is light. He can see all things. He doesn't need this kind of vision for provision. Come on. He doesn't need our vision for his provision. He doesn't need it. He already has prepared for us, each of us, provision in our life. God said, let there be light. He said, let there be light. See, because light is the source of life. Amen? Light is the source of light. Uh, God, God, who is the creator, created, who could create anything first, created the source of life first, light. He created it first. He didn't create Pastor Everett first, although I think he could have done a better job at creating things if he had created me and asked me how to do everything else. Because then everything would be exactly the way I think it should be. Hmm. Or maybe he should have created you first. Or someone else first. But he created light first. I, I, I love this, this, this verse in John 8, verse 32. It says, it says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. Amen? Jesus, God, is on the throne here today. Amen? It begins, everything begins with light. <laughs> I love that, that, that verse. God is the father of light. In other words, there was no light until God said, I'm going to make light. So, so he made light. Light came out from him. He spoke light into existence this morning. Right? <laughs> it's because we need to see that he made light. Amen? I need to be able to see, and I will see when I embrace the truth in my life. <laughs> Nothing will grow without it. If you don't have light, nothing's going to grow. Nothing's going to grow. Not really. I mean, if some stuff might, might look like it's going to grow, but it's not going to grow unless there's light. Light is the source, right, by which life flows to us. Amen? And it, Here's an interesting uh, tip from 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost. Verse 4, in whom the God of this world, little g, God, okay, in whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds, blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Jesus is the light of the world. He came to live in me so that I could become the light of the world. Amen? You can become the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. But if he lives in us, we are the light of the world. Amen? Let me give you another word. For. For. Hmm. Pharaoh, at the end of two full years, Pharaoh dreamed a dream. And he stood by a river for. He stood by a river for. <laughs> It's funny when we think about it just for a second that everything in Joseph's life was about to change because some man had a dream. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It's like some guy has a dream. He's a stranger. He doesn't even know who Joseph is. Joseph's in a prison and he's just working himself away. And Joseph had a dream. And Joseph never knew when that dream was going to come to pass, if it would come to pass, how it would come to pass. But he just kept staying faithful to what God had called him to do. And some guy had a dream that he stood by a river. He stood by a river in his dream. And it's like, what does that have to do with Joseph in a prison? everything and nothing at all. <laughs> it, 
in Joseph's mind, it had nothing to do with him at all. But in Pharaoh's mind, it was, it was, he was like, I need to know what this dream means. Amen? Joseph dreamed a dream and told his brothers. Pharaoh dreamed a dream and called for Joseph. I think it's funny. <laughs> Joseph was proclaiming. Pharaoh was calling him. Hmm. <laughs> Can I stand in that moment for just a second? That's exactly what happens to us. We, 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 we dream things, but God is calling us. I wonder which one is better, my dream or my call? Which one is greater, my dream or my call? John 3.16 says something really powerful. It says, For God so loved the world. For God. Did you know God is for you this morning? He is for you. He, he has prepared for you. And His, his preparation is is not from any other heart than the heart of love. See, because if we would desire love, we would desire God this morning. Amen? God is for us. His love is for us. That's what calls us. I, I love verse 17, because we know 16, right? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, to whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And 17 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So His, his, his purpose was not to condemn you. His purpose was to love you. Amen? And so His, his heartbeat, we can see His heartbeat right there in two verses. He's not condemning you. He's trying to love you. Amen? God did so love, right? He did not condemn, right? Real love never condemns. Think about this. Real love always expects the best from you. Matter of fact, real love changes you because real love is always drawing out of you love that is in you, that you didn't know you had, right? Right? Because the action, <laughs> the verb of love, always goes to draw out and expect better of you. Amen? You will change if you know you're loved. Amen? Now, there's a book about that. It's called, the, it's, uh, in this book is a philosophy of, of love tank. And, and we all have this love tank. And if, if our tank is empty, we're not going to give out what we don't have. But if someone starts to fill up your tank of love, you will give out love because you have love to give as freely as I have received freely do I give away amen amen that's a, that's a big life change right there so 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 if it's our response to love that condemns us think about that my response to the love of God condemns us it, my, it, it or it sets me free see I'm either free because the light of love shines into my life I must respond, either by rejection or reception. Amen? Hmm. I, I want to give you this, this is a stupid thing. It's really dumb. It, 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 might help, it might help me, anyways. It says, for get or forget. Okay? For the word F-O-R, Space get. See, because that's what we do. We, we come to God to get something, or do we come to God to forget something? <laughs> I, I just got to say, whoa, right there, okay? Because maybe you don't understand that, but it's true in our, when I get on my knees, did I come to Him to get something, or did I go to Him to forget something? See, there's two different ways of, go, of being a Christian. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm going to meddle with you just a little bit. It says, Philippians 3, verse 13, Paul says, 
brother and I count myself, I count not myself to have apprehended, colon, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth to those things which are before, right? See, I think we stand in the middle of that verse on the forgetting part. That's where we stand. We stand on the word forgetting because we're either, we're either manipulating or we're moving forward, but you're not doing both. See, we're either going to get what, what God has coming to us or for us, right? Or we're going to forget what we want and take whatever he has. See, we can't have both. We're either going to take it or leave it. That's what's going to happen. We stand on the word forgetting. And, and that's where we stand looking today. On, I like to say it like this. We stand on a precipice of a great hill, overlooking what was and imagining what could be. But I'm going to tell you this morning, we have to turn, take, take all of the things we think could be and we got to let go of those things. we got to forget about it. we got to forget about all the stuff that happened in the past because if I don't stand here this morning new and, 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 and looking into the eyes of the one that loves me, for God so loved me, he's pro-Everett. He's pro-fill-in-the-blank. He is for you this morning. And then I stand with the Apostle Paul on the word forgetting, right? If I'm willing to forget that, if I'm willing to not be in it for what I'm going to get, then I will be getting what he wants for me, his provision for me. Because I'm going to tell you this morning, there is a Pharaoh somewhere who has a dream. And it involves us, amen? Amen. Amen? There's somebody, Pharaoh wasn't nobody. Pharaoh was in a position of authority in the world. Okay? He was used by God to save his people. Amen? To save his people. To, to save the children of Israel. They were going to die in a famine if it wasn't for Joseph. They were going to die in a famine if it wasn't for a Pharaoh that found, found a Joseph in a prison one day and brought him out. And he was ready that one day. He was ready. He went before Pharaoh. He didn't make excuses. He didn't let it all just say, oh, I would, but I couldn't. I can't. He said, I'm willing to forget. Forgetting. So I can forget what God has for me. Amen? I just got to say it one more time. I'm sorry. I said it like 14 times already. Forgetting, quotation marks, is only getting what I'm here for. Come on. I want what God has for me. I want, I want his place and his position. I want, I want his, his provision for me. I just want to tie a bow on this for us today, okay? It's kind of a, a, a different message, I think, but let me, let me just tie a bow on it. And, and, you know, we all know Romans 8.28. It says, and we know all things work together for good. No, let me read it right. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, comma, See, see, that's the, the, the precursor, is that I must love God in order for all things to start working together for good. So I must love God. <laughs> I come into agreement that God loves me, amen, to them who are called according to His purpose. His purpose. And we know all things are working together for good, right? That means my, my past, my present, my future. That means my, my disappointments. That means my, my dreams. That means, my, that means, that means my, my good things. That means the easy things. That means the hard things. That means the things I like, the things I don't like, the people I like, the people I don't like. That means how much money I have or don't have. That means my, 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 my marriage. That means my my. my brothers and sisters, that means people that come and people that leave, that means every single thing, every single thing is going to work. God is going to take everything and work it. He's working it in my life and he's trying to do something for good because I love him. I love him. 
I've seen something really powerful, though, because if you take Romans 8.28, which we know, but then if you go 10 verses down, Romans 8, verse 38 says, <laughs> says this, I, for I am persuaded, Paul says, for I am persuaded. <laughs> i got to stop right there for a second because I got excited when I read, for I am persuaded, because you know what that sounds like? That sounds like somebody is a believer. I think Paul was a believer, just like you and I. And I think that each of us today, this morning, must come to a place where we decide once and for all, are we a believer or not? See? Believer or not. <laughs> we have to come to the place. And then Paul says that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nothing, he says, is able to separate me from the love that I have in Christ Jesus. You see that, see that right there? See, he received something. He received the provision of God. The love of God is my provision, right? He, he receives that into his life and it changed him because then he became a believer. Did you know that 28 to 38 is 10 verses? You know the number 10 is for the test? It's the test. And if you go between those two verses, you're going to see a lot of stuff in there that's going on and a lot of turmoil and a lot of craziness that happens in, in Paul's life. And he's talking about all that stuff, but, but he says, I know that all things work together for good to those that love God because I love him. I know it, I know it, I know it. And then he says, the test is, are you persuaded? Are you a believer? Are you going to stand up to your circumstance or are you going to let your circumstance dictate you? See, that's the thing. See, see, God is looking for somebody to have some faith this morning. Because faith is what changes circumstances in your life. Because what you have in you is greater than that anyways. But we don't see it that way. What we do is we see all of the other things in life and we go, that's really big. That's really hard. I'm really disappointed. I can't do this. Ah, da, 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 da. We got all these excuses, but I'm going to tell you this morning that you must decide this morning, are you persuaded or not? And if you are, stand in the middle of that verse that says, forgetting what is behind me so that I can receive what he is calling me to. Pull me, God, to that place. Amen? Persuaded just means I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I want to say this the only way I know how to say it. If you're a believer, start fighting for what you believe in. Stop laying down all the time and letting the circumstances tell you what to do because you are a believer. Are you persuaded or not? Did you know, verse 38, it shows me that there's a door. There's a doorway to God and it's, it's through faith. The doorway to God is through faith. If you want God to show up in your life, operate your faith. Amen? Operate your faith. <laughs> faith is the doorway that we get through God. Jesus is the door, but I must believe that he is there for me. Amen? That he is for me. That God actually sent him for me. God sent him for me. I'm done, but I'm going to say one more thing. <laughs> Psalms 23. Psalms 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is my shepherd, he is for me. And then it says, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. And th this week I was, I was just, just thinking about that this week. And isn't it, isn't it awesome that when the sheep lie down in the pasture, they're laying with their face two inches from their provision. Isn't it interesting that God has already provided for us, but we're not looking in the right place. We're not looking two inches from our face because we're focused on the wrong stuff. Amen? Kind of a powerful way to end a sermon. Your provision is right in front of your face. Amen? His name is Jesus. Amen? Let me just pray for us. If you would stand with me.
Father, Lord, we just thank you today for your word. We thank you for the message, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are our provision. And Lord, we stand here this morning persuaded that you are able to do it, all that you have called us to do and more. And Lord, I ask today that you would just touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, that you would come and touch our heart. Help us, Lord, to know that you are for us and that you are not against us. You didn't come to condemn us, Lord. You came to love us. And so, Lord, today we receive your love fresh and new again. Come and fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord, that we might be a blessing to others, Lord, that we would go and, Lord, conquer any giant, that we would walk over every hill, that we would escape through every valley, Lord, that we would, that we would just uh, be who you've called us to be in this moment, Lord. And, Lord, that you would lift us up, lift up our heads, Lord. Literally, Lord, lift our heads up, that we can see your face today. And Lord, I ask that in Jesus' name. I ask that you would come and bless us, Lord. Help us to change our thinking, Lord. Help us to desire you more. Help us to desire your word. Help us to desire relationship with you. Help us to pursue that, God. Help us to forget those things which are behind us, Lord. And Lord, that we would not be a people is trying to get something. But we would be a people who is trying to give what we have received away, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you today for that. I thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. And we seal it, Lord, with the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you are doing great things, even right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God is good this morning, and I'm excited about what he is doing. And I know that God is going to uh, in just a relatively short period of time, we're going to see some amazing things happen. And I'm so super excited about that. You know, there's a lot of uh, amazing things that are going on in my life that I can't talk about. But I'm going to tell you that God is doing things and he's, he's changing things. Amen? And we're going to be looking for, for God to really, 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 really do a work. Okay? And uh, I don't know what that even looks like. And you know what? It doesn't matter what it looks like. What it matters most is that we are willing to let him take everything away from us. Amen? <laughs> forget or forget. Amen? Amen. God is good.